Hi, I'm Amy. Hi, and I'm Alex, and we're both fourth year medical students here at Newcastle University. Uh, so, like I said, we're in our fourth year. So, we all, both of us, came in through Partners, which is the university's widen access scheme. And yeah, so we're here to answer any questions that you've got. Okay, so first up, we've got a couple of questions that we get asked quite a lot um, while people are joining us. The first thing I think would be nice to know is just what made you want to study medicine at Newcastle University? Um, I think that kind of comes in two things. It's like, why would you study medicine? Why at Newcastle? I think um, medicine generally got to kind of have an interest in science, an interest in people, and an interest in doing kind of different things all the time. I think for Newcastle, as Alex mentioned, we both came through partners entry. That was a bit, kind of a big factor for me. I think I'm kind of local to the area, so I knew the area. I'd seen the, um, the university and the medical school a few times through kind of open days and activities and then knowing that with the partners entry you could come in kind of to the lower grades, there's the summer school and there's the extra support there, that was really important for me. I think for Newcastle one of the best things about it is the early patient contact. So some of the universities you don't see a patient until you're in third year or maybe even fourth year. Um, with Newcastle, you know, the first two weeks you're in this room doing clinical skills with patients learn how to communicate, how to examine, how to take a history from someone. And for me, that's what I was in it for. Um, I like people talking to people, and I didn't want to be stuck in lecture theatres all day, every day. So that was a huge influence why I chose Newcastle. Great. Um, so you're both fourth year students, and you've been here for four years, naturally. But what was your first year like? Um, so first year, I think, is a bit different to what most people expect it to be. Um, there was a mixture of uh, lectures and seminars, so groups of around 20 just sort of going through the things that we've done in seminars, and there were clinical skills and then anatomy sessions as well. Um, first year was a really, really good year. There's a really good balance between doing work and being able to be part of the university, university so as a general, so get involved in activities and things. Um, one of the big things that you know we like to tell people is university or well, medical school, it's like having GCSEs, but instead of doing 12 of them, you're doing 100 of them. So everyone comes in thinking, oh my god, it's going to be really hard, it's going to be really impossible to do. It's not. They never tell us anything that we don't understand. The challenge is trying to find time to learn it all. Um, but there is time and everyone manages it. Great. So uh, everyone that's just joined us, this is a live Periscope with two fourth year med students at Newcastle University. Use the comments to ask any questions that you might have. Um, Four years in, what's been your favourite part of studying? I think for me, third year was the best year that we've done so far. Because I know we mentioned the kind of early clinical contact, and you definitely had that in the kind of first two years. And it was nicely introduced, and you weren't thrown in at the deep end or anything. But by third year, you were kind of out in the hospitals. It made a lot more sense as to why you were doing things. And kind of learned a bit more about what you were interested in, kind of different specialties. Got to kind of see a little bit more about it. And it's just, I think that's probably been my most enjoyable thing, kind of getting out into the hospitals and being able to do a bit more. I don't know about you. I'd have to agree. I think third year has definitely so far been the best bit. Just like Amy said, you know, actually putting everything we've learned into practice and seeing why we're here. Um, and it's just really useful to sort of go and actually talk to patients and do for a little bit what you'll be doing when you graduate. And it's, it really sort of puts everything into perspective and helps you realise this is what I'm aiming for at the end. Excellent. Um, the university, when you come to study medicine at Newcastle, you can do the first few years at Durham's campus. Did either of you two take that option? Neither of us did, um, kind of, because we both used the partner scheme. Mm -hmm. We met kind of a few people, obviously, now that the, um, we both, because it's third year when the two merge, so we've met, obviously, a lot of students that did do that, and for some students, that's the right choice. There's differences between Durham and Newcastle in terms of kind of the campus you'll be on, the amount of students and kind of slightly the way the course is. The curriculum's the same but it's kind of taught very slightly differently. I think with Durham there's a smaller number of students so it's a bit of a kind of small um, kind of everyone knows each other kind of group whereas in Newcastle there's quite a lot more people, it's a bigger kind of on city campus so it's very much about what you want from those first two years because they are the kind of your freshers, yeah, is the beginning. It's kind of what kind of campus you want for those years. That's important. And have you noticed how the, uh, the students from Durham have been integrating into life on Newcastle after they've spent three years down in Durham? Is it? Everyone seems to get on fine. Um, 
And it, throughout the two years that you do spend in Dungeons, you have to pop up to Newcastle for the occasional thing anyway. So um, when they turned up in third year, it wasn't like they'd never been here before. Um, and everyone seems to make friends. Everyone sort of gets on really well with each other. And when you talk to the clinicians that teach you in third year, when everyone's all combined together, they can't tell who came from Durham and who came from Newcastle. So even though you're taught slightly differently, everything you have to learn is exactly the same. The exams are pretty much exactly the same. So you can't really tell a difference from the students when they merge together. Okay, uh, so this is Ask a Med Student with uh, Alex and Amy, two meds, fourth year med students at Newcastle University. Um, if you want to ask any questions, just send it in the comments below. Um, next question is, um, once you've graduated and you've done your five years, you pick a specialism, um, well, after your foundation as well. Uh, have you guys got an idea of what specialism you want to do and has the course helped you with that? I do. Um, I think uh, in the future I'd like to do paediatrics, so for those who are unsure that's um, working with that's a child's doctor, um, so um, yeah, being working at a children's hospital with kids. Um, and yeah, third year in particular really, really helped because you get four weeks in a children's hospital just doing paediatrics and I absolutely loved it. Um, I think kids are much nicer than adults and they can't lie and um, they're just much better to work with. Um, so for me, I think definitely that's what I'm going to aim for in the future. But um, a lot of people go through the whole five years and then even their first, first and second year after graduate without realising exactly what they want to do. And that's fine. Um, some people just don't know. I think I've kind of pinpointed mine a lot less than Alex has. I think when we talk about if you choose your specialty a bit more throughout med school, I think some people come in with a very definite idea. I know I kind of came in with a very definite idea of what I wanted to do. And the more you learn and the more experience you get, the more that changes. And I think where I want to go now is very different to when I started. Because I know I was very interested in psychiatry when I started med school. And the more that I've done all the different specialties, women's health, Alex mentioned paediatrics, spend time in general practice, and you see that there is a kind of a big variety of things you can get involved in. I've, I've definitely changed my mind a lot more on where I'd want to go now. Um, yeah. Great. Uh, we've had another question come in asking, because North East has got quite a lot of hospitals around the region as part of the course, you do get embedded within a hospital. Um, have you guys got your hospital picked and if so, will it involve travelling around the region and how do you think you, you'll cope with that? So, so kind of when you go out to the hospitals, I was kind of third and fifth year and so we both obviously have just done third year. I was in, when we talk about the hospital has different base units, so there's the kind of Tyne, Weir, Northumbria and Tees and that kind of shows how much the hospitals span kind of right across to Carlisle and right down kind of Durham, Middlesbrough kind of area and there's obviously Newcastle as well. I know that I spent my third year in the kind of Northumbria base unit and so for that I'd had a try I was out in Carlisle for some time and then kind of across um, the Northumberland region. I know Alex, you were in Tyne. I was in Tyne, so I did quite a bit less travelling than Amy. So I did I went to all the, the universities the, all the hospitals that are, are local to the university. So um yeah. If you end up in Tees though, um, most likely you'll live down there for the year, so that'll be in Middlesbrough, Stockton area. Um, so once you're down there, there wouldn't be much travelling down there, but you'd have to live down there for the year. Um, so there's a good mix of travelling if you want it, but and you do get a choice um, to some extent, and there are a bursaries available for travelling, so no one should have to worry about having to travel. And we'll soon be kind of making our choices again for fifth year where we'd go to a different base unit. So again, it gives you a lot of variety to see hospitals before you've kind of qualified and you'll know kind of which area you'd want to go to and where you'd want to kind of work in. And um, in terms of travelling, the university offers kind of a lot of assistance, kind of offers bursaries. Um, and when I was kind of across in Carlisle, we were given accommodation there and um, the same kind of in Tees, they offer a lot of different accommodation. So there's always support wherever you travel, but you do get a bit of a choice as to whether you want to go somewhere quite far out or if you want to stay quite local and do more or less travelling. Okay, that's uh, great. You're watching uh, Ask a Med Student. Uh, we've got Amy and Alex, two fourth year med students at Newcastle University. Uh, add any questions you want to ask in the comments on the Periscope. We've had another one come in uh, just asking, med students are notorious for being hard working. How do you cope with all the work? Um, I think. It is hard work. I don't think anyone could deny it's hard work. But it's just something everyone does and everyone everyone manages. It is a step up from school and from A-levels. Um, 
and how much work you do just depend on how much you need to do. So some people will go to lectures and that be it, and they've just learned everything they need to learn. Some people will spend every night and every weekend in the library. Um, I think what's really important is to try and get a balance, and I know medical students will have this reputation for doing loads and loads of work because they absolutely have to, but when you get into medical school you sort of find a balance that works for you, and some people will be working harder than others, and I think it's just important to find a balance, and everyone copes with it. Yeah, I think it is about finding what kind of works for you and what doesn't, and um, kind of, it's not, like we mentioned before, it's not being dropped in at the deep end when you start, um, you kind of get eased into it, and um, there's a few kind of basic weeks in the first weeks that cover concepts that some people may have covered at A-level and some people, depending on their A-level choices, won't have done. And you gradually kind of fall into it. And the assessments kind of along the way help, you know, point whether you're doing well, whether you're not doing well, whether you need to be doing more or less work. And there's plenty of support for that um, within the university and kind of study skills support and things. Um, but yeah, it completely depends on the person. I don't think anyone could say that it would be everything that they do, though there is always time to fit other things in. Definitely. Yeah, you need to. <laughs> Talking of other things, Newcastle, it's got a reputation of being a huge football city. We've got Newcastle United uh, plus Gateshead as a smaller team. Um, we've had a question come in just asking, does the football interfere with your studies? Um, I don't think I've ever <laughs> no, 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 interfere so with my studies. Um, if you go to the library, which is upstairs in the medical school on the fifth floor, and there's a match on on a Sunday or during the week, you can hear it. But it's much more of a, a nice atmosphere than a, an annoyance. So if Newcastle score, you can hear it in the library, and it's always quite nice to know that uh, the local team's doing quite well. And similarly, if Newcastle don't score, you also hear that. Um, and quite often, if you're in the library, when there's a match on, one of the big screens um, that people use to study, someone will log in and put the football on in there. So um, people watch it whilst they study. And I think it adds more yeah. to the university lifestyle than being an annoyance. Um, yeah, because we're, we're not too far kind of in the med school from from the, where the football takes place and um, so you kind of get a lot of the atmosphere when you're out walking, the campus is a bit busier and it's, it's never caused me a disruption, if anything it's kind of a nice atmosphere. Yeah, it's always made it a nice atmosphere, yeah. Great. Um, you're watching a periscope of Ask the Med Students with Alex and Amy, two fourth year med students at Newcastle Uni. Uh, send in your, comment, uh, your questions through the comments. Uh, we've had another one come in. Again, it's to do with workloads and how would you be, would you be able to juggle workloads uh, to do paid work one day a week? Yeah. This question kind of comes in quite a lot. Um, I think it depends again on the person. Some people can't kind of, don't like to balance a job, but I, it wouldn't in any way be impossible to do. I know plenty of people in the course who have part-time jobs because they like having something else to kind of focus on um, in their spare time or it's just something that they need to do to kind of to get by financially. Um, I know that both me and Alex um, work as kind of student ambassadors at the university and um, have done different events and things like that. Part-time work sometimes where you can kind of get the option to when you're going to do your shifts a bit more can help, especially around our studies, I think, when exam time comes up balancing a job that you know you have to attend a specific day every week could be a bit harder but I think it's quite nice when you've got a job like this where you can kind of pick your shifts yeah. and balance it around your studies quite nicely. Um, I think it just depends on the person and the employer so if you can get a job where they're quite flexible and they don't mind you saying I'm not going to come in for the next two weeks because I've got exams or um, whatever then yeah it's definitely doable and I know like Amy said we both had jobs and Personally, I couldn't afford not to, um, so I made it work, and people do. It's fine. Great. Uh, part of the one of the features of doing medicine at Newcastle University is you get to do an intercalating year where you can go off and study something else. Have either of you picked to do that, and if so, what will you be doing? So we haven't picked just yet, but the option for us to pick is coming up, and it's something I think we're both considering. I'm considering it quite a lot, and I think if I do it, I'll be doing a master's in clinical education. So that's a year out after fourth year, and I'll be learning sort of how people learn, how people teach, how to marry them up so teachers make people learn, um, and use that in my future job, whichever specialty I go to, to teach both medical students and uh, junior doctors and other people as well. Um, and I'm really, really interested in teaching, so that's something for me that I've really been considering. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking about it, um, but there's no pressure. Um, some people do it, some people don't. Um, it doesn't make that much of a difference when it comes to applying for jobs afterwards. It's much more of an interest, and if you're interested in doing something, 
specific to you. Um, it's a nice option to have, and it's something that you get kind of three opportunities to do throughout med school, depending on what kind of qualification you want to get from it. So we had the option to do it after second, third, or after fourth year. Um, and it, it, yeah, it completely depends on the person, and there's a wide range of things you can do, whether it be kind of clinical education or some form of research that you want to take up in that year. Um, I think I'm slightly less inclined to do it than Alex, um, but it completely depends on the person and whether that's something that you want to have had kind of a second degree out of your time at university or not. That's great. Um, we've had a question come in, which is interesting to say the least, but uh, do you get tired of friends asking you to diagnose what they've got <laughs> or is that a common thing that happens? Um, I think that's quite a common thing that happens. It's not just friends, I mean, it's it's just, yeah. <laughs> anyone you know. As soon as you say, oh, I'm a medical student, oh, what, what, what can you help me with this? I think my standard line is, I'm not qualified yet, so I couldn't yeah. possibly say anything. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah. I think we're, we're kind of trained that you have to make sure that if someone's worried about something, they'd go and see someone who actually has kind of qualified. I mean, it, as ni nice as it is that they're aware that that's <laughs> what you're doing and that you spend your time learning with stuff and as interesting as it, it can be, I think, yeah. It, it's important to make sure that they still wouldn't yeah. trust exactly what you say.